before we do get to questions for Vlatko, I'm just going to turn it over to him for a few opening remarks. So go ahead, Dean. Uh, thank you, Hive, and uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for uh, for your time and supporting the U.S. Women's National Team and women's soccer in general. Thank you for uh, taking your time on uh, Sunday afternoon to be with us, and I hope you're all uh, safe and healthy. I just wanted to uh, open up uh, with uh, one uh, little announcement because I was asked uh, after the Holland game about the captaincy on the on the national team. At that point, it was still not uh, not quite uh, kind of clear in terms of which direction we we're going to go. But uh, two days ago, we announced uh, Becky Sauerbrunn as the new captain of the of the national team going forward. So I just wanted to share that with you before uh, uh, any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thanks, V. Um... Let's get it going. Kevin Baxter, why don't we have you start it off? Okay, <laughs> I'll start it off. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Vladko, for your time. Thanks for meeting Thanks. with us. Thanks. I hope you're well. Thank you. I, I wanted to ask you about Carly Lloyd and uh, Megan Rapino. I know you haven't seen them for a while. You've seen them this week. Um, how do they look to you, and what are your plans using them in the two games this week? Thank you. Uh, both Carly and, uh, and uh, Pino actually look better than uh, than what we expected is one thing but uh, also uh, they they look better than uh, better than uh, last time we, we saw them in terms of uh, physical preparedness mental preparedness they're refreshed they're physically ready they're physically fit uh, they followed the, the program from our high performance uh, coach and uh, we are going to be able to see both of them uh, uh, in probably both games Thank you. Thanks, Kev. Let's go to Jonathan Tannenwald. Go ahead, JT. Thank you, Aaron. Hi, Vlatko. Hey, um, you got the good news about Katarina, and uh, what do you think on on where she is at this point? Whether we might see her these games, and how we might see her in terms of a nine versus a ten or whatnot. Yes. Uh, First, uh, very excited about uh, about the good news. Uh, it came in right time. Uh, actually, any time you get news like that, it's the right time. So, well, very happy for that. Uh, Katarina is an exceptional player with exceptional uh, potential. But uh, one thing I, I want to make sure uh, that uh, she knows, and she, she's uh, very smart, and uh, she's uh, been now in this environment for uh, three camps, and she understands that this is just the beginning. Okay, Getting the papers, is uh, is hard, and uh, getting the getting the approval from FIFA is another battle that she had to fight uh, off the field. But now the real battle starts because now she's uh, she's uh, battling for a spot on the best team in the world, and that's the hardest battle. But uh, like I said, she has great potential uh, and ability to play in uh, different positions, and uh, I would not be surprised to see in both uh, if uh, if we see her on the field as as a nine. And uh, we've seen that uh, she can uh, adjust quick from game to game. Uh, we've seen it. Uh, we've seen her being uh, uh, dangerous uh, when she's closer to the goal in terms of scoring uh, goal scoring uh, goal scoring abilities, but also setting up goal scoring ab abilities from her teammates is something that uh, she's special at. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, JT. <laughs> Let's go on to Meg. Meg, you're up. Hi, Vlatko, Meg Linehan at The Athletic. With this announcement of Becky Sauerbrunn as captain, was hoping that you could walk through your viewpoint of that decision. I'm, I'm assuming also players are heavily involved in this decision as well, but you, the two of you go way back, and what is your relationship like now uh, on, on this national team? Yes. Uh... Myself and Becky obviously go way back, but that was not the reason why she is the captain on this team. Uh, what she did in Kansas City was uh, incredible, and uh, you know I, I, I will always respect that. But on the national team, I had a chance to analyze not just her, but everybody uh, in terms of uh, what their role is and uh, what their impact is uh, on the field, off the field, uh, travels, hotel, 
uh, anywhere. So uh, with all the analysis, everything that we did, uh, I felt like Becky is the, the best fit to be uh, the national team. But uh, in same time, I had a great conversation with uh, uh, Carly, Pino and Alex before, uh, before I made the announcement and they were very supportive uh, of that. That's one thing. And another thing is I want to make sure that, and I wanted to make sure that they understand that uh, Carly, Pino, Alex are very import, important for this environment. They're great leaders. Uh, they, have, uh, they have impacted this team uh, uh, with, uh, with their great leadership skills, but also going forward, Becky will need them. Uh, th it's hard to lead this team as an individual. Uh, uh, leading and leadership is, is, a, uh, uh, is a group uh, it's a it, it's a group role, and uh, Becky will need them. I will need them, and this team will need them. And they understand that that uh, every single one of them uh, brings different types of, of a leadership uh, skill or role uh, to this environment. Perfect. Thank you, Vlaco. Thank you. Thanks, Meg. Let's go to Steph Young. Go ahead, Steph. Thanks, Aaron, and thank you, Vlatko. I was wondering if you could walk us through some of the goals that you set in this January camp that you're hoping to implement in, you know, both games. So, uh, starting uh, starting this uh, this camp. Uh, We've talked a lot about uh, the details uh, because the general, the general things, the big things, is something that uh, I felt very good with uh, uh, after the she believes, and uh, especially in the Holland game. But uh, now we're we're starting getting into those uh, little details that will make uh, make uh, big differences. And uh, I wouldn't go into into uh, too many specifics, but uh, there are details that uh, we wanna uh, we wanna focus on on both sides of the game. Defensively, just being uh, being more ruthless uh, when we're out of possession and be able to control the teams uh, even when we don't have the ball, and uh, and uh, continue imposing our mentality of attack without a ball. So we don't defend without a ball, we attack without a ball. And uh, in same time, uh, sophistication uh, on when we're in possession of the ball and being able to solve uh, different, uh, different problems, different challenges that uh, teams may present. Awesome. Thank you. Let's move on to Jackie Gutierrez. Go ahead, Jackie. Thanks, Aaron. Hi, Blacko. Hi. Jackie here at Woman Take Balls. Um, I just want to talk about your, uh, you know, coaching career so far with the team because, you know, out of 11 matches, you have um, they've all been wins. So congratulations on that. Um, so coming into this match against Colombia, like, how do you prepare um, to play against a team that, you know, for the first time in four years? So for for us, when we prepare for the team, obviously we'll look at the strengths, weaknesses of the team, uh, and. Uh, Opportunities and uh, and threats, but uh, we don't we don't go uh, we don't prepare enough uh, just to win the game. We always prepare to be the best version of, of ourselves, regardless of the opponent, and uh, that's why uh, we're preparing for for this team. But we're also preparing for the next one and the next one, and ultimately for the uh, Olympics. Now, Colombia, we're uh, we're pretty sure is gonna. Um, Present uh, certain challenges that may that we may not see in uh, from some of the teams that are in uh, she believes, but uh, that's why we we chose this uh, opponent so we can get ready uh, going forward. And thanks. Let's see, Sean McCaffrey. Go ahead. Blanco, thank you for taking your time out to do this. You have some players that were in Europe, some that were here. Do you feel that the players from either location come in with an advantage over the other? Anything particular? I wouldn't say that they uh, they have a certain advantage uh, over the other uh, overall. When we look at the, the whole process uh, from uh, now all the way up to the Olympics, but uh, in certain moment or certain particular time, they may be uh, more in sync with uh, or more in game shape. Uh, just for example, Sam Yu is coming in. She is, she's probably in better game shape, uh, game shape uh, than uh, some of the other players that are on the team. But uh, overall, uh, when we look at the big picture, uh, where we're at now to where we're uh, go hoping to be uh, for the Olympics, uh, I think that uh, everybody is going to be at the same level and on the same page. 
awesome. Uh, let's see. Just got a couple more for Vlaco here. If you got a question, raise your hand because we do have a little bit of time for V. I think next is Dan Pentland. Go ahead, Dan. Thanks, Aaron. Um, hi, Vlaco. Um, just a quick question on Rose Lavelle and her fitness. I know that she took a little knock just before Christmas. Um, how is her fitness currently, and um, is she likely to play in both of the games coming up? Yes, uh, Rose has been training uh, very good uh, with some management uh, in a uh, couple of the of the trainings, and uh, her fitness uh, was never a problem. Uh, it was just uh, uh, just a little nug that she had, so we we had to be careful there. But uh, right now, it seems like everything is uh, behind her, and uh, we still going to be cautious. Uh, the way we're going to approach these games, uh, but uh, I'm very confident that uh, she's going to play some amount, uh, certain amount of minutes in both games. There you go, Dan. Some amount. Um, Alex Azzy. Is it Azzy or Azzy, Alex? Tell me, I'll, I'll try not to forget. Uh, million dollar question, Aaron. Um, you can say Azzy. All right, Alex Azzy. Um, hey, Blackco, uh, Alex Azzy with On Her Turf and NBC Sports. Um, I'm curious to kind of get your, your take on something. So as I was watching the NWSL um, draft the other night, I was taken by just how many men work in women's soccer. And I'm curious for you, being a man leading some of the strongest female role models in the country, just some very powerful women, kind of in the last year and four months for you, being the, the head coach of this team, just if there's anything that you've taken away from working with these women um, and just kind of how you see your job in terms of empowering them and the next generation of women. Yes, uh, I, I've always said that uh, Ever since I came on this uh, job, I felt like my uh, my uh, my job was to uh, to coach, to teach them, uh, to teach them the game. But in same time, uh, I felt like uh, the in these moments or in these times while I was teaching them, they were teaching me. They were teaching me uh, different uh, different uh, moments from the game or life in general. I mean, I've had some in, uh, incredible conversations. Even even now, when we talked about leadership with Carly and Pino and Alex. It was a learning opportunity for me, and I've been uh, so thankful for uh, everything that uh, that uh, this group of women have uh, have done to help me become a better coach in different moments and uh, different times. But uh, in terms of uh, empowering them, and they know that uh, as a, as a coach, as a staff, uh, and even the federation uh, have done a, a great job to build a platform for them to to voice their to voice their uh, opinions to to fight for what they believe on and we and they they know that we are going to support them thanks Blacko. thank you thanks alex um we're going to go to sandra herrera go ahead sandra Great. sorry sandra if anyone has any questions for Vlatko more, please raise your hand now, or this will likely be the last one, and we'll uh, see if we can't get uh, Sam or Becky in here a little bit earlier. Go ahead, uh, Sandra. Awesome, thanks. Uh, Sandra did at CBS Sports. Uh, hi, Vlatko, thanks for your for your time again today. Uh, just sort of piggybacking off of the NWSL draft, um, your former, uh, well, not former team, but your, for, your, your hometown, Kansas City, is, is back and involved in NWSL, and they kind of made some noise <laughs> and really turned some heads uh, in that first round draft. I was just sort of wondering, uh, maybe get your perspectives on sort of how that played out. Um, it went very long, two hours, uh, record breaking trade for a lot of allocation money. And uh, how does it feel to see a city like Kansas City back involved in, in the draft? I mean, first and foremost, FC Kansas City will, will always have a special place in my heart. Uh, that's where I started. That's, uh, that's the, the club, that's the city that, that, that gave me a platform to to move on or get better, uh, improve, and uh, and help me uh, to to get to where I'm where I'm at right now. So I was happy to to see them first coming back. I was happy to see my friends uh, being coaches uh, or coaching the team, 
and uh, I was happy to see them uh, making some noise, uh, creating a little buzz in the in the community, creating a buzz in the in the soccer community, women's soccer community especially. So uh, look, uh, we were watching the draft uh, the, the the draft uh, live uh, first as a as a team, but then at the, I guess the the first round, but then it went a little bit long. The team left, the coaches continue, uh, continued watching that. I thought it was great. Uh, it just uh, reminded me, uh, myself and Laura, Laura Harvey is here with us as well. So Laura uh, reminded us in, uh, about some special moments uh, with NWSL. And uh, I was uh, happy to see so many young players uh, getting the opportunity to uh, to get drafted and hopefully get opportunity to play on the uh, in NWSL. Awesome, and, and just to follow up on on the team that you're going to be facing tomorrow in Colombia, um, you know you're, you're coaching the top ranked team in the world. So much is always spoken very highly about the U.S. Women's National Team with with all of the the victories that they rack up, um, and going against a team like Colombia that hasn't seen a lot of time on the pitch over not even just 2020 but maybe over the course of a, of the past. Uh, two years getting to, to, uh, together. Uh, how much of, of tomorrow is, is potentially going to be uh, an opportunity for your team to focus on things systematically or part of it, maybe just getting a run out against a team that has a lot of time on the pitch? Yeah, so I, I spoke a little bit about it earlier when I said when we're approaching the team, we're, we're preparing for the team. We're looking at their, their strengths, weaknesses, what is going to be our opportunity, threats. Uh, but we're also preparing for what's next and we're preparing for the next big tournament and we're preparing for for what is after that uh, when i say that is uh, when we're getting ready we don't just say okay if we do this it's going to be good enough to win this game that's not good enough for us we're we're always trying to be the best that we can possibly be and then move on from there and that what we we know we believe that if we prepare to be the best possible version of ourselves, then we are going to be successful. And that's our focus. So that's how we're going to approach this game uh, or the preparation for this game.